the same palette, so the color theory, in general, your painting should only have two colors on it. So if you look at this one, this is like bluish gray. Actually, oh, and a little bit of orangish right there. So blue and orange, orange and blue, complementary colors, but it both on. Okay, so with these, you can go lighter or darker, but it have to be contrasting for this, these techniques to work. I'll go uh, a little bit darker and uh, I can do a little magenta action. I would get a sponge, but the TA doesn't, didn't give me one yet. Sponge, medic! Sponge, sponge. Whoop, 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 whoop. Sponge. Magic show. Get the magic stations going. You don't have a sponge? No. I know, right? Yeah. The show must go on. Come on, little winner. Okay. So then, there's a couple different things you can do. There's like splattering and painted stuff and whatnot. But I'm going to go uh, this magenta first and then to dole it out. You could use a little burnt umber. I'm going to have mine a little bit darker. So uh, also you can do tense tones or shades of it. Thanks, man. Okay. So uh, this is like a magenta, so let's test it out. So this is going to be a little too dark. I'll even go a little bit of white now and make it a tone. So tones are always good. So a tone is adding uh, gray to it. So I'm going to do one consistent color more or less. So this is sort of like a magenta kind of thing. It's a darker value of that, some sort of a shade. And then to paint it on there, you want your brush strokes to look pretty good. So then watch this. So here's my outline. I'm going to squish down the brush down here. And then roll up. And then I'll get rid of the brush strokes by tapping it in there. So, the shape reference with this kind of leaning bubble, this is sort of Dr. Seuss right here that I mentioned. So it's kind of like the same concept as making Oda, but I'm using Dr. Seuss for reference for the shape. So now I'm coming in and just getting rid of those sloppy brush strokes, so it looks kind of more naturalistic. So here's another one. Uh, I'll also make note that if you do a border, don't have it symmetrical. So I have two hoopties on this side, and then three on the other. Otherwise, you'll have a look like a playing card, where you get each corner has like a little thing. A uh, little dot on it. And if you're doing this abstract kind of thing, like this little hoopty on the bottom, uh, to make it make sense, you gotta have some other abstract elements. So you can't have like a natural looking painting and just have two things on the bottom. It's kind of weird. Oops, let me get that more consistent. Okay. Then, what I can do is let that dry. I'll uh, pick the top. So then let this dry to the touch. I'm going to show you a couple different techniques, and then you can kind of combine it. So uh, I'm going to use a little bit of a paper towel to make it thinner. So that's kind of a texture, which is possible. So this is like abstract stuff. Then sponge to get rid of the texture. So I'm going to kind of get this thing right here. Also, uh, some of Nathan Oda's will do a uh, border on it, which to a, for a border... Chris! Yeah. Rinse this brush off. It's really good. If you can use that little uh, mojo and get that clean. Okay, so then I'm going to use a black border. And when you outline anything, if it's stylized, you can't just do the same line. So, in other words, <clears throat> You can't go over the thing with one solid line. It needs to go from thick to thin, different weights. So I'll hold the brush back here, keep the brush kind of wet. Start here, and then get wider and wider and wider and wider. And then do the same thing. Now, you don't have to have outlines, but watch this. So I'm going to come in here. They go from thin to fat. And when you guys are doing this, the further back you hold on the brush, the easier it is to be smooth. You can see how jiggly the brush is uh, the further back you go, so it looks like there's no way it can be smooth. But 
once you go hold it down, it's like hard to get it stabbed, but once you touch the canvas, it mellows out. So then, I have some water drips on there, and you will be able to see this thing change color. So this will change color, and then I should have let that thing dry a little bit more. So it should be dry to the touch where it's not even sticky. <clears throat> then, when you add water to it, it rehydrates it. So then, you can force lifting. So I'm going to come in here, magic towel, ordinary towel. Rub that down there. Oh, damn. Bro. Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. You do not see that every day. No, sir. No, sir. So, this is sort of like a little splattering technique, different than the one I'm going to be using over there. Actually, maybe I should do both. Cool. So, do the same thing on that one. So, you can see the different. Uh, different styles with all the little splattering. You could do different ones. I like to do it horizontally. You can also drip it. And then it's kind of a cool technique. Nathan Oda doesn't really do this technique so much. I just wanted to show you a different option. So this is a drain. <coughs> We're drained down on the other side. Okay, so then, after I do that one, uh, you can use a toothbrush. So use a toothbrush, and then you can splatter some on there. So Nathan also does this. So then that's sort of just splattered on there, and that could be it for Nathan Oda. And then you can tap in just some of it so it doesn't look like splatter. So you can kind of see how I'm touching some of the bigger dots. Nathan Oda, that's it. Woo! 